Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. Now that I have truly done a total gut out of the dress shop property, it's time for me to start putting things back together. And I'm going to start with this little portion in the hallway. Now you see here I've placed my open staircase in the stairwell hole. Even though in the original plans I extended the floor line on the first floor to provide room for the staircase, I've decided now that I have the third floor, I can put the staircase inside the house, but I will still be using that extended floor line for other purposes. So let's go ahead and get started. Now right here, I'm preparing to replace the floorboards on the second floor in the hallway. And dolls, just as I was about to begin, I realized there was a baseboard still attached to the wall that I hadn't removed. And although I don't show it in this frame, I did use my blow dryer on the highest setting to soften the glue behind the baseboard to make removal easier. And it worked out really well. Now, dolls, now that that little baseboard is out of the way, I've got my little pieces cut that are going to replace the floorboards. So after lining them up and gluing them down, I used binder clips to secure them while they dried. Now, while I was waiting for the boards to dry, I saw that there was some glue on the wall in the uh, upstairs bedroom and I started to pull it and it was so gummy and so rubbery. I'm just wondering what kind of glue is this? I truly feel like I've encountered at least five different types of glue in this demolition. Okay dolls, let me stay focused or I'll be picking wallpaper all day. <laughs> Now, as Daddy always said, you should finish the outside of the house first before you begin to do the interior decorating. And so that I wouldn't feel guilty about not following Daddy's instructions, I decided to go ahead and paint the outside of the dollhouse. Now, dolls, I found this lovely green color on the reject table at my local home store. Dolls, always check to see what's available on the reject table because a lot of times you can find really great colors at really reasonable prices. Now, dolls, from this angle, you can see on the sidewalk in front of the doorway, I've added my egg carton treatment for stones. I haven't completed it, but I have started it. I will leave a link in the description of how I do that process. I will be trimming it all the way around with my stones, but I just wanted to let you see that I'm painting the dollhouse and all of the trim this lovely green color because I think it makes it look more realistic. I'll reserve my contrasting colors to other components of the house as I complete the exterior. And here's a quick glimpse of the house completely painted on the outside. So let me show you what I've started doing on the inside. Now this is a template for the roof line area for the third floor. And I decided I'm going to do like a beadboard effect on this uh, roof area just to give it some depth, some contrast, and a little interest. Just giving a nod that it is the attic area that we're using for the bedrooms. Now dolls, these are my birch wood coffee stir sticks. These are the same size sticks that I used to repair the floorboards in the hallway near the stairwell. Now in this instance, I used the full stick to add it to the template and I cut it after it's dry. I allowed it to dry overnight and then I used my really sharp electrical scissors to trim it all the way across along the lines of the template. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. I really love using templates because it makes creation and installation a lot easier than trying to sit in front of the dollhouse and create this. Now here it is, doll, sitting in the attic. I have not installed it, it's not glued, but I just wanted to show you what I was doing with it and what my idea was. Now you can see here, this is where the roof line was removed. And after I glue it down, I'm gonna trim it out with a nice piece of wood to make it look finished. So I'm really excited about my idea. And I now I just want to show you what I did with all those scraps from this project. So these are the remnant pieces from the template. So I cut the rounds off of them and I used all those scraps and remnant pieces to help me to create a floor for the room above the dress shop showroom. Now dolls, I always create my floors on a brown paper bag template. After getting the pattern I want, I trim off the excess and install it. Now this is the room that was originally going to be Aunt Bess and Aunt Janie's bedroom, but now I'm going to make it the sewing room. I'm really happy that I raised the roof and made that third floor because it gives me a lot more room and freedom to create the look that I'm trying to achieve. Dolls, I did use several stains to create this color because I wanted it to look a little dark and aged. So I'm really pleased with this. So let me let you see what was going on downstairs. 
So at this angle, you can really see everything's looking just stripped, raw, and bare. So I created a template on graph paper and then transferred it to brown paper bag. So I'm making wide plank panels for this wall and I'm doing it to cover up the damage from the walls. When I removed all of the old bead board, the walls began to splinter and crack. So I think this will stabilize it and act as a cosmetic cover up for all the damage that the walls incurred during demolition. So here I am again adding ample amounts of glue to create my template. Now no worries if the glue gets on these planks it's not a big deal I can sand it off because I'll be painting these. You always have to be careful or it's recommended that you stain your pieces before you glue them on in case you do get some glue spills but this is going to be painted. So now that I have my full wall template created now I'm going to cover up those uneven seams so when you're making uh, panels like this, dolls, it's no reason to be uh, super concerned about cutting everything perfectly because if you have some jagged edges, this finishing piece will camouflage that. And as you can see here, it makes the planks look like they're one continuous piece rather than two pieces that are joined together with a seam. And you see here, I'm just marking where I need to cut it before I add my glue and allow it to dry. Now here's just a quick glance. I just sat the panels in there. I did add uh, the finishing piece to the top of the panel. I do have a little space I need to put above the door, but I'm not gonna add that until I uh, decide what I'm gonna do for my door trim. And I also have to make a decision about what color I'm gonna paint my panels. <laughs> So let me show you dolls one quick thing before I let you go. I just wanted to show you how I added shims when I was installing the windows. Now you may have to do this in any instance, whether your dollhouse is new or whether you're doing a renovation, but definitely when you're doing a renovation, because again, sometimes the cuts are not perfect and sometimes the little measurements are off. So I have some pre-stained pieces, which are actually remnants from the floor. And when I did that attic area, I actually, I'm using the birch wood sticks and I have the tiny, tiny coffee stir sticks as well because sometimes depending on how big the gap is, you may need something smaller than the birch wood stick. Now in this particular window, because the gaps were kind of big, so I added wood on one side of the window and at the bottom. Now dolls, after I got the window actually set inside the opening, I did add an additional shim to the top of the window because there was a gap right below the opening of the top of the window frame. And I just pressed it in with a little bit of glue and it actually created more tension to make sure that the window stayed set in. I kind of pressed it in, again, making sure that it was flush against the window frame. And you definitely want to make sure that it's flush against the window frame because you don't want problems when you install your shutters. I still had my spare little bag of shims and pieces and I did want to show you what happened with the windows on the side. Now the windows on the side, if you remember, these are the ones that I was really aggressive with and I ripped the frame and the window boxes off, which left a really rough edge below the window. So I had a, some more of that little strip that I used to trim off my panels in the showroom. And I did my really super accurate measuring here to determine how big the little piece needed to be. And I think it made it really nice and neat. They were the perfect size. I just had to cut them to the right length and paint them. So I was really happy that that was a quick fix. And I did a really basic straight cut because that's how the original window frames were done. If I was doing or replacing the outer frame entirely, I would have done miters, but I just went along with what they already had originally and replaced this board that I ripped off in the beginning. So dolls, here's a quick glance of where we are so far. All the windows are installed and I actually painted the little window boxes a, br a brown color. It's not stained, it's just a paint, but it kind of complements the stain that I used on the door. Now dolls, I've been made aware that some of you all have not been getting your notifications when I upload. So if you don't get a notification, always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop.
Bye-bye now, dolls.